Shalom and good day, my brothers and sisters. Um, all praises to Yah because he has blessed me to come before you today to share with you the mystery about Moses being in the cloud and why he called him out from the crowd on the seventh day. So as you see, we're it's still in the month of Savan, and, and soon Savan will be closing. It is the third month. And I know some of you are probably saying, huh? And the reason we are still in the month of Savan, we added a 13th month according to the Most High Prophet. And this prophet I'm talking about is an ancient one. And he was given the um, formulas for us to use to determine when do we add a 13th month. OK, I know some of you are following the Jewish known as the Yahad. OK, so unfortunately, when you look at their records, because I do have access to their records and I um, and I check their calculations. Unfortunately, you will find out they do not they do not follow the prophet Enoch writings, nor do they follow his formulas that the father has given unto him. Uh, one of the formulas that we look at for the 13th month is the three, five, eight rule. And um, they do not follow the 358 rule. So far, from looking at some of their years, I'm seeing they're following the 368 pattern. Again, they're not following the 358 pattern. Okay, let's first give honors to our Father who is in heaven, for he is Yahuwah. He is the Most High. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We also like to give honors to his son, Yahushua HaMashiach, for he is the son of Yahuwah. He's the son of God. He's also known as the second Adam. He is the uh, door of the sheep. In the Hebrew tongue, we say the left. And he is the light slash eye of the body, which is known as iron. And he is the fountain that will give you the living waters. Again, it's so important that we go back to the original foundation to understand these messages, these mysteries that is revealed unto us because I'm telling y'all, the Messiah has given a lot of mysteries, mysteries and messages to understand even the time that we are in for we are in the last days, okay? We also give honor to our mother in heaven who is known as the spirit of wisdom. For the Messiah says this about her. It's in the gospel. That wisdom shall be justified by her children. Okay, so she's not made in vain. She shall bring forth or she shall birth the children of Yah. Again, it's mysteries. When you go back to Genesis and you look at the makeup of Adam, you will learn <laughs> about her. It's in Torah. It's in Torah. And the prophets such as David and Sodom and all of them talked about her. Even the ancient prophets such as Enoch talk about her. She's also known as the glory of Yah. And I want you to write down these key words I'm giving unto you. So when you do the word search in the Bible, you will get confirmation on what I'm sharing with you. So she is the glory of Yah and she's the beauty of holiness. Mysteries. Okay. They are our family in heaven. Again, what's done in heaven is done in earth. This is why in the earth, the father has created what? An earthly father and an earthly mother. So when you look at the titles that Eve, Sarah, Rebecca bear, that's where it comes from. As well as the titles that's upon our fathers, such as Abraham. Um, no, I mean, such as Abraham and Adam. So when you go back and look at their titles, the idea or the concept comes from heaven above. Remember, it is men of, it is, is it, remember, it starts in the heaven and the earth manifested. These two rams go together. They go hand in hand. All right. So what you see before you is a picture giving an idea what it may look like when the father Oh, had the cloud upon Mount Sinai. And we're going to review a couple of chapters in the book of Exodus, also in the book of Jubilees and the work of Josephus, because I'm telling y'all, we need to start paying close attention to the living word because there's mysteries being revealed right before us. And we cannot see these things unless the Ruach open your eyes. 
and then you will see it. Okay, so take this time now just to meditate on this picture because you need to ask yourself why. Why did the father come in this form? A cloud. And then within the cloud, fire. Put you meditate on that because, again, he's telling us something deep. And y'all, I'm telling y'all, if y'all would do the precepts and the line upon line, you would see cloud mentioned several times to give you understanding by our father in heaven. Remember, we are in the flesh, so we don't understand a lot of spiritual things. Okay, this is where the ruach come from. This is where the breath come 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 into place because it's to give you the understanding, the knowledge and wisdom that comes from my father. In other words, it would give you his mindset. Remember, our father ways is not the same as our ways, nor are, nor are his thoughts the same as our thoughts. Okay, so first let's go to the copyright because I will be sharing some copyright materials with you. Um, the title again of this word today, let me clear some things out. All right, so the title of this word today is The Mystery of Moses, Moshe in the Cloud and the Seven Days. You need to ask yourself why. You need to ask yourself why, okay? This fall under the third month, because remember I told y'all I would come back unto you to review some biblical events that takes place in the third month. And it's very important that um, we reflect or we remember about these events because it's going to give you understanding about the biblical prophecies. And it's going to give you understanding dealing with the father, the son, and the mother. And it's going to give you understanding dealing with the bride of the Messiah. The hundred and forty four thousand and the nation of Israel. OK, everything's connected. It all goes into what? A circle. And the one who's in the middle of the circle is our father, Yahuwah, because what he is all and all is in him. OK, so Savan means what? They're covering. Again, there's many videos on the channel that will elaborate deep about the mystery of Savan and what does it mean that Savan or what does it mean they're covering. OK, so the title of this word again today is the mystery of Moses slash Moshe in the cloud and the seven days. OK. Now that we have that out the way, I do need to go to the note page. Because it was something that the father remind me I need to add. I think I'm going to put it down here instead. Let me put it down here because it's very important that I don't forget the numbers. Yes, our father speaks through words and he speaks through numbers. He speaks through science. He speaks through his heavens. He speaks through the earth. He speaks through his creation. Do you see where I'm going at? He is forever speaking unto us. But because we are not connected unto him, we don't recognize it. This is why we have to what get back reconnected to understand how to get back reconnected. You got to go back to the beginning. What did we lose? That's something for you to meditate on. As we get through this word, you're going to understand what we lost and what the Messiah restored back unto us. So we can be what connected to them. So we can be one with them just as man is one with his wife. Mm -hmm. OK, so I need to write this down. Forty days and forty nights, which basically come out to be a total of forty and a half days, and you'll see why. Okay, and I have to write down forty and a half days minus the seven days will equal three to thirty-three and a half days. Okay, and then I need to put down Revelations chapter eleven because we're going to see this. Number again, three and a half days. Okay. And that's dealing with the two witnesses. All right. Now that we have that out the way, let us get to the word. Now, Check the video description box because you're going to have to map out these events and 
one of the links you're going to have to click on is your Whois calendar. Okay. And if, this is the reason why. When you start reading the other books, you're going to have to do precept upon precept. And then you're going to understand why King James, whose actual name is known as Yaqub, and it's in the 1611 Bible preference. It tells you his true name. When you look at word transliteration or the correct word transliteration, his name is Yaqub. Okay, Yaqub, which means Jacob. All right. You're going to begin to understand why the father chosen him to have this book. I mean, sorry, to have this book or to have the sacred scrolls translated into a book that's written into the English tongue. Again, this fulfilling biblical prophecy that the prophet uh, Isaiah prophesies unto us how our father would speak unto us in another tongue. Do you hear me, Yashrael? OK. And you're going to see why the I'm talking about the original print, which is the 1611, before the heathens began, began to remove the books. However, the father has given us another witness in the earth, and that is the um, Israelites or the Jews of Ethiopia. They have a list of all the sacred books that the father has ordained for the masses to read as proof unto you that it comes from him. Okay. Again, do not put yourself in a box. If you put yourself in a box, you're going to close yourself out from what the spirit of Yah is telling you. You need to unharden your heart, open your ears and your eyes and listen. Okay. And allow the spirit to teach you. First John chapter two, verse 27 and John chapter 14, chapter 15 and chapter 16. All things come by spirit. So stop boxing yourself in. Stop putting yourself in a prison. Allow yourself to graduate. Allow yourself to come up higher. These was the things that he was teaching unto his servant Job. Okay. Remember, we are what? We are reaching to have the same mind as our father in heaven. Not this fleshy mind, but to have the same mind as our father in heaven. So in the video description box, can click on the link to have access to you who was counted. It is free unto you. Remember, the living word has paid a price unto you. No one should be charging you to have access to his calendar. They should be teaching you how to do the calendar. And his calendar is made up of three lights going back to the foundation, which is the sun, the moon and Maseroth. If anyone is only teaching you one one light, they are operating out of the order. And even Enoch would testify against them. OK. So when we look at the third month and also there will be another video coming out because we got to look at the events of the flood, too. And you'll see why. OK. But for right now, in this video, we're going to look at the mystery of Moses being um, or the mystery of the cloud that's upon Mount Sinai and the seven days that Moses was in the cloud. Why did the father do that? OK, so the week that we need to start looking into is dealing with the um, second week. We make sure. Yeah, the second week of the most high count is very important. And you'll see why as we march out these events. Remember, nothing happened by in coincidence. Everything's happened for a reason. And the father is telling us we need to start paying attention. Or you're going to miss the mark or you're going to miss the boat. OK. So started in the second week of the third month on the Savan on the 15th day. This is very important. OK, so we'll come back to that. So to set this off. Let me see where I want to go. I want to start in the book of Jubilees first and you will see why it's so important. No. Father said, when we go back to the King James, we're going to read Exodus. Chapter 24. OK, we got to, we have to set the foundation first before we start going into the other books. Again, today we're going into the book of Jubilees. We're going into the book of work of Josephus. Yes, Josephus expounds on this. Mm hmm. Remember, Josephus' book is written the same manner the Bible is written. 
despite what the heathens have done. And guess what? When you read some of the um, European writings, I'm talking about the ancient history, like books that came out 1500, 1600, or whatever later time period, they too quoted from Josephus, proving that these heathens have been removing things from these sacred books. And these heathens are going to answer for what they did. Because they touch the sacred writings. Josephus was of the lineage of the Maccabeans. He was of the lineage of the Levites. And I believe he's of the lineage of um of the high priesthood, which comes from Aaron. Okay. And he was called by the Most High to write these sacred things. So when they remove these sacred things from his writings, they're going to answer for what they did in the day of judgment. Father, don't forget. Until they repent and make it right. They're going to answer. They're going to pay for it. However, the father has given us witnesses. So when you start going into some of the um, ancient European writings, I'm talking about these old, old books before they begin to realize we start, we will start reading. They have put a lot of information that they quoted from these sacred books, proving that these things were there before they start to remove them. Another proof is the slave Bible. Look at the books that they gave my people and to read when it came to the Bible, because, again, they felt like they, they read the book of Exodus, that they would revolt and wanted their freedom. Yes, this is what the heathens did unto my people, but they go, they're going to have to pay for what they did unless they repent and make it right with him and with his people. Oh, yes. Like what, what is written in the living word in Galatians 5, that that a man sold, that that a man read. Father, don't forget. He have his own books to remember what you did and what your forefathers did. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let us, let us set the foundation. We're going to read Exodus chapter um, 24. Moshe is called up into the mountain. The people promise obedience. Moshe built up an altar and 12 pillars. He sprinkled the blood of the covenant. The glory of Yah appeared. Now, you want to underline that or highlight that for those who have a copy of the 1611. And you're going to see why it's important. Aaron and her have the charge of the people. Moses go into the mountain where he continued 40 days and 40 nights. And when you translate that further, you will learn that days means daylight. So he was in the mountain for 40 daylights. Okay. And I'm not talking about from sun up to sun down. I'm talking about when the light first appear in the heaven to when that light disappear. Okay. That's what days is talking about. It's talking about daylight. All right. But when you read the scriptures, you're going to get a time when he went up into the mountain. He didn't go into the mountain at the beginning of the daylight, y'all. Mm -mm. He went into the mountain after the morning activities again we got to get from the ways of the heathen we think about this 24 hour period we got to get out of that the father is talking about the phases of the day and what are the phases of the day going back to the beginning of genesis chapter one he said what evening and morning makes up a day evening and morning makes up the day which is evening is night it is the darkness and the morning is the daylight okay Got to go back. Remember the foundation. You also go on to say, um, okay, so we finished reading that. All right. Now, to understand this chapter, your homework is you're going to have to read Exodus chapter 19 all the way, including this chapter, because when I was doing some um, precepting and I was going into the um, strong concordance, there's a feast that my people partake in when Moshe was upon the mountain. And when you do the word transliteration, the word Lord actually translates back to Yahuwah. And this is very important to know because when you read the prior chapters, you will learn that Moses went up to the mountain and taught with Yahuwah. And Yahuwah gave him some things he needed to go back and tell the people. So I'm going to get straight to the point. And the thing, one of the things he told the people about what they had to keep was, was, was the feast days, such as Passover. Pentecost, known as Shavuot, and Feast of Tabernacles. So that would prove unto you how Aaron knew that day was a feast unto the Lord. So you go back in the strong concordance. Our Father's telling me, let me show it to you. Because you know, it's better that you see the proof. 
And to understand how Aaron knew that, because Moses told them. Remember how the father came and visited them in a cloud on that third day. And the people were scared. They said, no, Moses, you go and talk to him. Mm -hmm. So Moses talked to him and the father told them what the people would have to keep. And then when Moses came down, he told the people, the people said we would do it. And then they entered into the covenant. They sealed it with blood, which is the marriage. So this is how Aaron knew. Okay, that that day was a feast unto Yahuwah. But the problem with Israel, they were always mixing idolatry with what was what with was what sacred to Yahuwah. And proof of that can be found in the book of Hosea, also in the book of I think Ezekiel or Isaiah. Mm -hmm. They were always mixing it. Okay, again, they was like the heathens, where they wanted to be like the heathens. OK, so when you go to Exodus, let me find the uh, exact verse, because I want to show it to you that the, that the word Lord will translate back to Yahuwah. OK, let me see where I'm at. I'm looking in my book, y'all. Okay, that's X19. I need to go into 24. I'm going to get there, y'all. So it's after 24. Because the chapters come after 24 is going to, going to show you what some of the things that the father talked to Moses about. Okay. So when we get to chapter 34, okay, chapter 34 of Exodus. And make sure I'm looking at this right. Is it? Y'all hold on. Let me, let me find this. Hold on. Okay, sorry about that. It is Exodus 32, and I need to make a note of that because the chapters that come after Exodus 24 is showing you what the father discussed with Moses when he was in the mountain for 40 daylights and 40 nights. So you're going to have to go to Exodus 32, okay, to um, see what I'm talking about. And we're going to look at verse 5. Verse 5. So when you go to your strong concordance, it will show you that Aaron knew the day of Shavuot, the day of Pentecost. And it's very important to notice because then you're going to understand. John chapter 4, verse 35. And I need to put that in our notes, y'all. So when we get to our note sheet, we have it. Okay. John 4, verse 35. You can begin to understand why the Messiah said four months. Y'all hear me? He said four months. He didn't say three, three months. He said four months. Okay. Again, you have to march out these events with the children of Israel. There were some changes. And how I can prove that the father would make changes, look at when we start our year. With our father from Adam before Moses, they start the beginning of year, the beginning of the year in Tishri, Ephanim, okay, in the seventh month, because the seventh month represent what? The beginning and the end. But when it came to the children of Israel, there was a change. And that's why the father said unto Moshe, your year will now start in Eviv. Eviv, some people say Aviv. Okay. All right. Now that you have that. So we're going to verse 32, verse 5. And I want you, and this is proof unto you. Mm 
that when he said this is a feast day unto the Lord, he was talking about Yahuwah. Yahuwah, H3068. Okay? Because remember, even in your Bibles today, you go to Strong Concordance, it, it's proof unto you that wherever the word Lord was at, they replaced, I mean, wherever the, the Father name was at, okay, they replaced it with either with Lord or God. This is proof unto you. So that verse says, let me read a verse. It says that, and when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And, and Aaron made proclamation and said, tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. So your question is, how do Aaron know this? He knew this because of the conversation that took place with Moses, with, with Moses, Moshe, when he went to the mountain the first time and came down and told the people what was in it, what was in the agreement. And the people said, what? We would do it. That's how he knew it. Okay. So when you click on H3068, and then the fathers also reminded me, it's in the scripture. He said, they would keep this feast in this mountain, in Mount Sinai. Oh, yeah. And when you watch out the events, when you get to the book of Numbers, you will learn that they left out the second month in the second year out of Egypt. Do y'all hear that? Again, that's something for you to meditate. We ain't going to talk about that in this video, but that's something for you to meditate and research on. They were supposed to keep Shavuot in the wilderness of Sinai, in Mount Sinai. Okay? So 8-3... And find a number. Where's that number at, y'all? H3068, okay? It's showing you the word, the English word that's there is Lord. Remember, English is very broad. But if you go back in the Hebrew, it's very, very specific. It's showing you who you are calling upon. And I don't know if you can hear. Okay, Yahuwah, Yahuwah, and that is the name that is supposed to be there. All right, I know some of y'all saying what, what, that's not what we was told. Again, go back, read, get with the spirit of Yah, and let the spirit teach you these sacred things. Okay, let me copy and paste that so that'll be in our notes. Okay, very important. That was Exodus. 32, verse 5. All right, so now I can close that out. All right, let us read Exodus chapter 24. And he said unto Moshe, Come up unto Yahuwah, thou and Aaron, Nadab, and Abu, who? And seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. See, I love these numbers. It's the reason why the Father chose seventy elders. This was a part of the government. This was a part of how we govern ourselves. Okay, we had elders and we had priests. Okay, and out of all of them, there was a chief established. All right, let us read. Verse 2. And Moshe alone shall come near Yahuwah. So Moshe, Moses, was chosen to be the main one to deal with our Father in heaven. But they shall not come nigh, neither shall, neither shall the people go up with him. And there was a reason for that. Again, you understand our Father is holy and why they could not just go like that. Do you understand why the Father had these standards? Okay, and also fathers and minor, and remember during that particular um, particular time period, Moses was what was called the what the deliverer. For the father called him, and he came in the father's name to what to go before Pharaoh, who was the dragon, who was Satan. Okay, again that was a hidden one in Pharaoh. The prophets will reveal it, and the book of Hebrews will confirm it. Okay, so he sent the deliverer. To set his people from the powers of darkness, from the serpent, from the dragon, from the viathan. Okay. Verse 3. And Moshe came and told the people all the words of Yahuwah, 
Now, this is very important. Y'all want to highlight that. That's proven what I'm telling y'all about the prior chapters. So you're going to have to read chapter 19, 20, 21, and 23 to understand okay. this chapter. Okay. So he came and told the people all the words that the Most High spoke unto them. So they knew about these feast days. So they knew about Shavuot. Very important. And all the judgments and all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which Yahuwah has said, will we do? So they was agreeing to the covenant. They was agreeing to the marriage. Do y'all do, do see this? This is very important. This is why we got to go back and reflect on these things because I'm telling y'all the Father is speaking something great here. All right, verse 4. And Moses wrote all the words of Yahuwah. Do y'all hear this? Now, this is the first time. When he went on Mount Sinai, remember after, um, remember the um, on the third day visitation when the father came down the cloud and they said, no, Moses, you go talk to him. So to understand about that account, Deuteronomy chapter five, we, we, we touch on that. OK, so that's what that's dealing with that account. So Moses wrote all the words of Yahuwah and rose up early in the morning. Do y'all see this? He's giving us a phase of the day. So he rose up early in the morning. What is the morning when the light first appeared in the heavens? And I'm going to give you all the mystery on that. That's the glory. That is the physical example of what the glory of God is. Do y'all hear me? I'm giving y'all a mystery now. That is the physical example that we see displayed in the heavens so you can understand what is the glory of Yah in the spirit. Okay. And it was there in the beginning with our father, Adon. Mysteries. Mysteries. <laughs> This is why Peter said that ye shall receive your crown of glory that should never fade away. All right, let's let us keep going. And Moses wrote all the words of Yahuwah. Do y'all hear that? So he wrote it in a we call it a scroll or a book. And rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill and twelve pillars. Again, twelve. We see that number, right? Representative of what? The twelve tribes of Israel, according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Do y'all see that? All right. Now we need to see what day did this take place. So when we go to the calendar, this happened on. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna walk this out on day fifteen. That's when the children of Israel enter into the wilderness of of Sinai. Do precept upon precept. Exodus chapter nineteen verse one. Deuteronomy chapter sixteen and um Exodus chapter twelve because you will find that. He took them out of Egypt on the 15th day at night. Then they entered to the wilderness of sin on the 15th day of the second month. Okay. This is where he, what he gives them quails and manna. And that's when he tells them about what is the Sabbath day. Then on the 15th day of the wilderness of, of, of Sinai, they came there. Again, why 15? And it deals with the Ten Commandments mysteries and i'm going to give you that that parable for that when one rescued the ox or sheep out of step out of the on the sabbath day that is a good work unto the father a good work unto him so when he saw his people bound in darkness in a pit in a prison he said i'm going to bring them into my rest hallelujah but let us keep going so now we're getting into the third week of the third month. Okay, so we're going to march out these events. So on the 16th day, which is day two of them being in the wilderness of Sinai, right? And that is the day when Jethro came. And also that is the day when the people are told they have to sanctify themselves. So the men could not come near their wives because when Torah would teach you that copulation would make one unclean. Again, you got to understand these physical things are tied in with spiritual things. They go hand in hand, just like the heaven and the earth go hand in hand to understand why the father had these commandments, these instructions. Then on the 17th day, OK, this is when this is known as day three. This is when the father come down in the form of a cloud. Exodus chapter 19, verse 16. And this is the day I'm going to put it in. That's where Moses go out to the mountain to speak to him. Okay. Okay. 
Also, I'm trying to think it was any other events on the 19th day. Let me go back to chapter 19. Just look at that chapter. Make sure I'm not. Um, and I'm going to put Deuteronomy 5 for this one. Deuteronomy um, chapter 5. Because this is when the people told him, no, Moses, you go out there and speak to him for us. <laughs> ah, and the father said the people spoke very well. Huh. When you're not right, you can't stand before your father. You have to be in righteousness. Okay. The people fear the father. It was, it was, it was too much for them. They couldn't handle it. Okay. All right, let me just go here in chapter 19. Now, he do go on the mountain to speak to the Father also on the 15th day. So it's good that we have that so we can add to the calendar. Okay. Uh, it's acting slow. There we go. <laughs> I was like, what in the world? There we go. Goes to Mount Sinai. And this is why we have to go back through these verses and comb out these details. We got to be very specific here. Okay, because you're going to see why when we start going in other books. Remember, by the time you get the book, Israelites, the heathens ought to have been in it. This is why you need a Ruach. And this is why the Father gave you the format on how to read his word. Precept upon precept, line upon line. Here a little and there a little to see the bigger picture. Okay. So on day 17, Moses go up to the mountain. Okay. And this is when he talked with our father to receive the covenant. To receive the agreement. So on day 18, this is where we at now. When I read that verse unto you in Exodus 24, day 18, during the night, Moses informed the people. Then in the morning he rose up early. What he what he built an altar and he built 12 pillars and he made offerings. And this is the day when the people entered into the covenant, and it was sealed. In the blood of the sacrifices of the animals. Okay. This is the same day when Moses entered into Mount Sinai. So he entered into Mount Sinai after the morning activities. Do y'all see this is not a 24 hour period. This is dealing with the phase of the day. So that's, that's what starts to count out. That's why those scriptures say 40 days first, then 40 nights. Because of the order, how Moses entered into the mountain, or what phase of the day. So I'm going to expound on how you, this is how you get 40 and a half. So when you march out these events, you will see that the 40th night is going to um, start on the next day. So this is why you get 40 and a half, and it's very important to know that. Again, it's going to relate to the numbers. So. On day 18 of the third month, this is when Moses is in the cloud. And he's in this cloud for seven days. So now we're going to get to the mystery. So when we read these scriptures, I'm going to go ahead and give you this number so you'll have it. That the seventh day that the father called Moses out of the midst of the cloud is on day 24. Day 24. Of the third month. Okay. Day 24. Far as the night go. It was the sixth night. Far as the daylight go. It was the seventh. Do y'all see that? Seven. Again the father speaking in numbers. Which bring me to this. So we can get this out of the way. What does seven mean? Now on the channel we talked about this y'all. And I'm only going to give you key words. If you don't understand what seven means, you need to get with the Father now to understand the mystery of seven. Why does he often use this number? So when you hear the word seven, it should be reminding you of what sanctification. We talked about that and what that is in the mystery of sanctification. It should also remind you of the Shabbat, the Sabbath slash rest. Okay. 
And then finally, it should also remind you perfection. That is the prophetic word that the Father gave me unto you to prophesy that we are in the season of perfection, which is 21. The number 21 represents perfection. And let me type it out. Why? Why does 21 represent perfection? Hmm. When you break down 21, 21 is made of what? Seven times three. And when you study about the number three, three means spiritual pureness. Spiritual pureness. So when you look at the Godhead, it's made of what? Three divine spirits, which is the father, the son, and the mother. Do y'all see this? Just like the makeup of Adam. Body, soul, spirit. Three, right? We see that number a lot. Three. Okay. Even the wicked one will copy what the father has established. Mm hmm Okay. All right. Now let's get back to the reading. So we ought to declare, or we just learned from the living word, that when Moses talked with the father the first time on Mount Sinai, he wrote down all the things he had to go back and tell the people of what they will agree to. OK, so he wrote this down. So they had a copy of it before he went on the 40 daylights and 40 nights. This is very important to know. Now, verse five. And he sent young men of the children of Yashrael. OK, and I like saying the Hebrew word because you begin to understand they have significant meaning. Yashrael is made up of Yah, which come from our father's name. Um, Sa is from our mother's name, Sarah, because her name means to have power with Yah. And El is the title of our father, meaning that he is the God. He's the big G-O-D above all gods. OK, so the children of Yashiel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrifice, peace offerings of oxen unto Yahuwah. And Moshe took half of the blood and put it in basins and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Very important to pay attention about this blood and what Moses do with it. Okay. That's another thing for you to meditate on. Verse seven. And he took the book of the covenant. Underline that. The book of the covenant. Because these heathens saying that the covenant is done away with. They don't know what they're talking about. And Paul testified against you. Romans chapter one. Covenant breakers. Because when we precept this, you're going to see what is the covenant. That was established in the beginning with our father, Adam. Again, they have no understanding of these spiritual things. They lack, they lack the oil, which is what? The knowledge and wisdom and understanding that come from heaven above. Well, let us keep going. The book of the covenant, underline that, y'all, and read and read in the ordinance of the people. So he read everything he wrote down unto the children of Israel and unto those strangers that came out with them from Egypt. And they said, all that Yahuwah has said, we, I'm sorry, will we do? So they agreed to that. What is a covenant? It's kind of like a contract. It's an agreement, right? It's a marriage, all right? That means to join yourself to, to, um, I'm thinking about the letter Ta. It means what? To bring two things together, to join yourself to, to go and covenant with, which is the X, the T, when you translate it into the Picto Hebrew or when you translate it into the Patio Hebrew. All right. So all that Yahuwah has said, will we do and be obedient? Do y'all hear that? Because obedience is better than sacrifice. When you're disobedient, you're classified as being of idolatry, sorcery, and witchcraft, which our father hates. That is abominable. Verse 8. And Moshe took the blood and sprinkled it on the people. So the blood had to be put on the people. Again, it's giving you a physical example what, what the book of Ephesians is talking about you in chapter 1. Okay? <laughs> What's going to take place with you? All right? For those who receive the salvation of Yah. OK, for those who receive the renew marriage or the new covenant. So Moshe took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, behold, look, the blood of the covenant, which Yahuwah have made with you concerning all these words. Then went up Moshe, 
and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and the seventy of the elders of Yashrael. And they saw, and they saw Yahuwah of Yashrael. They saw the God of Israel. And there was under his feet, do y'all hear that? And there was under his feet, as it were a pave work of a sapphire stone. And as it was the body of heaven in his clearness. You want to highlight that, y'all? Okay? Because when you read the sacred books, you will begin to learn that where Moses was taken to. Mm-hmm. 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 And I know I got some they says because they don't understand these spiritual things. I mean, they really don't get it. Bless their little hearts because they're in, they in the box. But those who have been born of the water and the spirit, we understand and we see it. So you want to highlight that? Because y'all, that's not of the earth. That's dealing with another realm that, that came to the earth. And they saw the God. They mean those elders, Moshe, Aaron, Nadab, and a by who saw the God of, of, of Israel. And there was under his feet. So under, under the God of Israel, under his feet was a pay work of a sapphire stone as it was the body of heaven. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. In his clearness. But let us keep going. But those who in the counter, y'all can begin to understand what this verse is telling you. When you, when you study the counter, you're going to understand this. What took place? The heaven came into the earthly realm. Hallelujah. Okay. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw God. So he didn't have to put his hand on them, y'all. Even the nobles of the children of Israel saw him and did eat and drink. Y'all, y'all need to highlight that and meditate on that because something divine took place there. Mm -hmm. Remember, this was within the borders of Eden. I'm going back to the foundation now. This, this took place within the borders of Eden. So if you want to reach out to the heavens, where do you go? To the high places. And one of the sacred high places is Mount Sinai. When you go back in the beginning of Exodus, you will learn that the first time that the father spoken to Moshe was in Mount Sinai, because he told him to take off um, your sandals, you, you, you're standing in, in holy grounds. And the reason why that place was holy, again, you go back to the foundation, look at the borders, the borders of Eden. Mm, mm, mm. But let us keep going. Okay. Verse 12. And Yahuwah said, unto Moshe, come up to me in the mount and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written that thou mayest teach them. So I'm going to speak unto you heathens who come against the commandments, the covenant, and I'm warning you because you speak foolishly because you don't understand these divine spiritual things. This did not come from man. This didn't come from Satan. This came from my father in heaven. So you need to show some respect and just say, well, I don't understand it. So I'm going to be quiet until the father give me understanding. Hold your tongue because you speak blasphemies. You speak wickedness and father don't like it. And he's writing it down in the book. Because you are held accountable. All mankind is held accountable. Go back to the beginning. It's no excuse for you. Whether you read the Bible of the King James or not. Because the Father has given you signs in the heaven and signs in the earth. The Father has sent you his messengers. In other words, he has given you the warning in many shapes, fashions, and form. But you have what? Harden your heart and reject it. And this is why he will judge you and hold you accountable. Do we not have the ancient um, proofs 
that the flood came from the civilizations, the ancient civilization writings? Do we not have the ancient ruins of Solomon and Gomorrah and Nineveh and ancient Babylon and ancient Tyre to prove that he destroyed those nations and prove that he destroyed the world with, with the flood? But yet, y'all turn a blind eye. But you will still be held accountable. It's no excuse for you. Romans chapter 1 testify against you. Paul writings. Hallelujah. But let us keep going. Let us keep going. So I'm going to read this again. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, come up to me in the mount and be there. And I will give thee tablets of stone and a law and commandments, which I have written that thou mayest teach them. Teach who? The congregation of Israel. Uh-huh. That's, that's the church in the beginning. I don't know where they get this foolishness from, the Roman Christians. The church has always been there. Okay? The congregation of Israel, because it was made up of what? Israelites and Gentiles. Read Exodus 12. Read De Deuteronomy 29. You will see it. There was nothing new beneath the sun as written as, as by King Solomon. Okay? And Moses and Moshe rose up, and his minister. Joshua or Yahusha, okay, and Moses and and Moses went up into the Mount of God. What is this Mount of God? It is Mount Sinai, okay. And he said unto the elders, "Tarry ye here for us until we come again unto you." And behold, look, Aaron and her are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. All right. So he what put those in charge. Father, want me to mention to you, as written, in, I think it's the book of Galatians, chapter five, that Mount Sinai is in Arabia. And we had a archaeologist to prove that he found it. It's not in Mount Sinai Peninsula. You know, that little piece of land that's between Arabia and Egypt. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That's that's the lie from the Romans. OK, it wasn't given to them to find it. However, this archaeologist have found it in Arabia and he is, is in other words, when you see it, you can see the burnt markings. And you can see the drawings of what the children of Israel have drawn when he was there. Yeah. Truth is coming out. I love it. Like my grandma would say, a lie go far and by, but here come truth cleaning up the lie mess. So we're in the season where the Father is revealing all things, but it's up to you to listen and to receive it. So what I may do, if I can find it, I'm going to attach the, the, the findings of Mount Sinai in the video description box for you so you'll have it. Okay? All right. Verse 15. And Moshe went up into the mountain and a cloud covered the mount. So you want to ask yourself, why did this cloud cover the mount? Again, when we in the other past videos, I shared with you what that cloud was. What that cloud was. First Corinthians, I think it's chapter 10, verse 1 to 5, tell you who that cloud is. Okay. Verse 16. And the glory of Yahuwah abode upon Mount Sinai. So First the cloud, then came what? I mean, I'm sorry. First, okay. Let me get my tongue straight. The cloud covered the mountain. Then in addition to that, the glory of Yah appeared upon Mount Sinai. What is that glory, y'all? The fire, the light. <laughs> Just like how the day starts. Daylight. You see what? Light in the heaven. You need to pay attention to this because we see the Messiah manifesting a lot of greater, a lot of these signs, which would give you an understanding of the status of Adam. What does it mean to be Adamic before he fell? What did he look like before he fell? Because remember, we was made in their image. All right. Glory of Yahuwah. Father's reminding me, did, did you know? Who wisdom is and what she looks like and those who possess her. And she's more priceless. I mean, she is more valuable than any ruby, stone, pearl, gold or silver. Hmm. 
mysteries, y'all. But anyway, the glory of y'all abide upon Mount Sinai. Fathers, let me know, read the gospel and you will see that wisdom was upon his son and wisdom nurtured him and, and, and mature him. It's in there. Uh-huh. It's in the gospel. Okay. And the cloud cover it. Now, you want to make note of this. The cloud cover Mount Sinai six days. And in addition to that, the seventh day, he called it unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. So we need to find out why did the father do that? Why did the father have Moshe to stay within the cloud? So the father's telling me now to go ahead and give you the mission about the cloud. The cloud is um, Yahushua HaMashiach. He's the living word. He is the same one who followed them. They, um, He's the same one who led them. He was in the cloud by day and he was a fire by night. Let's go back to the scriptures that how he will baptize us not only in the water, but also in fire. Water and fire, which represent what? Water and blood. Like I said, it's it's a lot of analogies and stuff that the Father given us so we can understand these spiritual things. Because he's restoring you back to be Adamic. What you was made in it, what you was made to be in the beginning. So Father's telling me you go ahead and give you that part. Okay, so you have it. First Corinthians chapter five, verse one through five. Okay, verse 17. And the sight of the glory of Yahuwah was like devouring fire. So when you're in his glory, which is what wisdom, <laughs> when you cover in that light, those who are not right, you can't be in it. It's going to devour you. It's going to eat you up. This is why by the prophet Zechariah say that when the Messiah returned, he's going to be what a consuming fire. All right. The living word. He's going to be a consuming fire that those who are evil and wicked are going to instantly what dissolve before him. OK, they're going to be devoured. Devour, devour. I can't say that word right, but you know what I'm saying. Do you all see how all these things are connecting together. But those who are righteous, what will be able to endure the fire, just like he had the three Hebrew young men in the days of Daniel, in the days of Nebuchadnezzar, they were able to endure the fire because they would come out like what silver and gold you be purified. In other words, all the impurities that's in your heart would be removed so you can go, so you can become Adam. And who is Adam? The son of God. What goes for male goes for female, for he called them what? Adam. Genesis 5 and Genesis 1 and 2. Do y'all see? Everything's connected. It's go back in a circle. And he is in the center. He is all and all is in him. All right, let us keep going. And verse 18, and Moshe went into the midst of the cloud and gave him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 daylights and 40 nights. So here's the precepts for those verses. We are going to look at verse thir verse 18 for these precepts before we go to the book of Jubilees because it's going to prove to you that this covenant is ever existing even in the days of Adam. Yeah. This is something that the heathen's not going to stand. And the reason why I use the word heathen, you will find it in the Bible, but when you begin to understand what a heathen is, a heathen is someone who have no regard for the sacred things of Yah. And they speak very foolishly because they have no oil in them. They have no ruach in them. They are speaking of the flesh. And they don't understand that everything they speak is being recorded in our Father's sacred books. And they're going to be judged for that. Okay? All right, so let us go to, when we look at verse 18, let me make sure I'm looking at this right. The reason why we need to look at verse 18, we're going to have to go to Exodus chapter 34, verse 28, and Deuteronomy chapter 9. And to save some time, I went ahead and copy and pasted this in the notes. Okay, we'll come back to this, to these things that's listed up top. But I want you to really pay attention. You have to understand why would... um. This is Exodus. Let me put it out here. This is Exodus 24. Okay. Okay. So why would these be a precept to Exodus 18? So let us find out. Exodus chapter 34, verse 27. And Yahuwah said unto Moses, Write thou these words, for after the tenure of these words, 
I have made a covenant with thee and with Yahshuael. Do y'all see this? Do y'all see this? He made a covenant with Moshe and with the children of Yahshuael, Israel. Okay, let's keep reading verse 28. And he was there with the Lord 40 daylights and 40 nights. And I'm sorry, he did neither eat bread nor drink water. You want to meditate on that. How was he able to be sustained? I'm going to give you this mystery. It's dealing with the spiritual bread and the fountain of the living waters. His hunger was satisfied. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. His hunger, I mean, he was not hungry, nor did he a thirst. And number 40, we see the number 40 again in the gospel. Like I said, these numbers represent something deep. For my for my family who studied the calendar along with me, notice that when daylight increased or decreased, okay, and that's the same thing with night, vice versa. When night increased or decreased, it is done in increments of 40. <laughs> All right. Okay. So Moses did neither eat bread nor drink water. And Moses wrote upon the tablets, I'm sorry. And he wrote upon the tablets the words of the covenant, which is the 10 commandments. Do y'all see that? The 10 commandments is the covenant. Do y'all see that? And these Roman Christians are speaking great blasphemies and say the covenant is did away with. Go back and read the Ten Commandments with the two greatest commandments. And you're going to see what they're throwing out the door. That's wickedness. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 9 verse 9. When I was going up into the mount to receive the tablets of stone, even the tablets of the covenant. Highlight that, y'all. Highlight that. So the tablets of stones is the table of the covenant, which is what? The Ten Commandments. This is the agreement that the Father set with the children of Israel and those who came in with them in this covenant. All right. Even the tablets of the covenant with you who were made with you, then I abide in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. I neither did eat bread nor drink water. Again, to understand how that's possible, this is done spiritually. All things are accomplished and done by the Spirit. Verse 10, and Yahuwah delivered unto me two tablets of stone. Okay, so this is what our father gave unto Moshe, two tablets of stone written with the finger of Yahuwah. So this was written by our father hand. This is something we need to pay attention. It's very important. Okay, and on them was written according to all the words which Yahuwah spake with you in the mount. So all the words that the father spake into Moshe in Mount Sinai was on that tablet, y'all, which is the covenant. Do y'all see this? So go back and read those chapters and see what the father spoke unto Moshe that's on that covenant, on those tablets. Then it goes on to say, out of the midst of fire. In the day of the assembly. What was that day he's talking about? He's talking about that day on the third day when the people had to sanctify themselves. In other words, the men could, could be near their wives. That was that day when the father came down. Okay. Verse 11. And it came to pass at the end of the 40 days and 40 nights that Yahuwah gave me the, the two tablets of stone, even the tablets of the covenant. So this is the same as you'll see these words be interchangeable. OK, so this is the covenant that was given. Now, I'm telling y'all, it's nothing underneath the sun. When you go back to the beginning, you need to ask yourself, how did Abel know what sacrifice to give unto the father? How did Adam know about these things? Because Remember, these things was passed down from generation to generation. How did they know these things? Again, when you understand Genesis 6, 6 and 3, do you understand that the law, which is the covenant, has always been there and it's spirit. It's not dealing with a stone or words or letters that's on the stone or on the paper or on a scroll. This is dealing with spirit. Another thing that heathens do not understand. This is what gives you the knowledge and understanding what is evil or good before our father. This is what teach you and guide you. 
This is what tells you what is pleasing to the Father, what is holy to the Father, what is clean, what is abominable, what is unclean, what is profane, etc. Do you see where I'm going with this? Then you understand Genesis 6 and 3. Verse 12, and Yahuwah said unto me, Arise, get thee down quickly from hence, for thou people which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt have corrupt themselves. They are quickly turned aside out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten image. Again, that's dealing with idolatry um, and adultery. They were cheating on the Most High, serving another God, and had the audacity to say, This is Yahuwah's feast. <laughs> mixing what is holy with paganism. Okay. Verse 13. Furthermore, Yahuwah spake unto me, saying, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff necked people. They are very hard headed. Let me alone that I may destroy them and block out their name from under heaven. Do y'all hear that? that you want to highlight that because Father ain't playing with us. What was done then is done, is, is, will, is will be done again. And I will make of thee a nation mightier and greater than they. So the father has the ability to do this. Okay. So I turned and came down from the mount and the mount burned with fire. And the two tablets of the covenant was in my two hands. Do y'all hear this? Now remember how many times did Moses do this? He did this twice. So this is the first time he was on Mount Sinai for 40 daylights and 40 nights. Okay. And I and I look and behold, ye have sinned against Yahuwah Elohim, who is your God, and have made you a molten calf. Ye have turned aside quickly out of the way which Yahuwah commanded you. See, they already had the instructions. Remember, before Moses went into Mount Sinai, they was told what was so pleasing to the Father. So they knew better. They were warned. Go back and read those chapters from Exodus 19 to 24 and you will see it. They was told about this. Don't do this. But yet they did it. And I took the two tablets and cast them out of my hands and break them before your eyes. Because you know why he broke them? Because they broke the covenant. They broke the marriage. They broke the commandments. They broke the instructions. They broke the law. Okay. And I fell down before Yahuwah. So this is Moses because he hurt. How could you do this? And I fell down before Yahuwah as at the first 40 days and 40 nights. I did neither eat bread nor drink water. If you notice that when you're troubled, you know, when troubles come upon you or when your spirit is stirred, you notice that you can't eat nor drink because you're troubled. So here's Moshe. He's troubled by, by what the people did. Okay. Because they broke the covenant. They broke the law. Okay. So. Most, Moshe did neither eat bread nor drink water because of all your sins. Do y'all see that? You got to pay for, you have to pay for your sins. A consequence had to be set in place. So Moses on their behalf interceded for them because of their sins. All right. Because of all your sins, which ye sinned in doing wickedly in the sight. See, the father was there in their presence. They did it in the sight of him to provoke him to anger. For I was afraid of the anger and hot displeasure wherewith Yahuwah was wroth against you to destroy you. But Yahuwah hunkered unto me at that time also. And Yahuwah was very angry with Aaron. Y'all, Aaron knew better. Because he was told to. So he was very angry with Aaron to have destroyed him. So that's that's how angry he was. He was a, he was he wanted to destroy Aaron. And I prayed for Aaron also the same time. So Moses also interceded for Aaron too. So again, to those who don't understand our father mindset, when the father would speak a judgment through his prophets and you may feel like it don't come to pass, you need to understand that there are people interceding in your behalf because you don't really understand what's about to come to the earth. So we have the saints 
We have prayer warriors to intercede on your behalf to change our father mind. But many don't understand it. But let us keep going. Verse 21. And I took your sin, the calf which ye have made, and burnt it with fire. Just like the calf was destroyed with fire, this world too shall be destroyed with fire. Because fire will bring a new, brings a new beginning. And stamp it and grind it very small, even until it was as small as dust. Because you know, if you burn anything with fire, it becomes black, like charcoal, right? And I cast the dust thereof into the brook that descended out of the mount. Okay. Now that we have set the foundation, let us go to the other books. It's very important that you have that behind you. So I have just proven to you. That is the covenant. That is the law, including the Ten Commandments. So I'm warning you, heathens. Stop it. What you doing? All right. I'm in the book of Jubilees. Let us begin. Yahuwah revelation to Moses on Mount Sinai. And it came to pass in the first year out of Egypt of the children of Israel out of, out of Egypt in the third month on the 16th day of the month. Now, he's given us a date. Now, remember, this book is written by Moshe, too. Now, remember, I told you that when you're dealing with trans other transliterations of our sacred books, you have to do precept on precept to get the correct date. So by looking at the calendar that I have already shown y'all, the date, the date, all right? We know it took place. Oh, yeah. The date when they came into Mount Sinai and the first time that Moses went into the mountain was on the 15th day. So here's your date. There, It was their first year out of Egypt. In the third month on the 15th day. This is why I had to do by precept upon precept for y'all so you can see that. So you won't get a little bit confused. But let us keep reading. So on this day, on the 15th day of the third month, Yahuwah spake to Moses saying, Come up to me on mount on the mount and I will give thee two tables of stone of the law and, and of the commandment which I have written that thou mayest teach them and Moses went up into the mount of Yahuwah and the glory of Yahuwah abode on the mount Sinai and a cloud overshadowed it six days okay so when we get to this part this is dealing with Exodus chapter 24 Exodus chapter 24 okay this is why it's very important that you have the foundation in you first, the King James 1611, so you can precept it with other books. Okay. Verse three. And he called to Moshe on the seventh day out of the midst of the cloud. What is that seventh day, y'all? On the calendar. What was that seventh day? It fell on. The 24th day, the 24th day, the first day of the cloud fell on the 18th day, the 18th day. Make sure you write down those dates. And he called the seventh day, I'm sorry, and he, the seventh day, out of the midst of the cloud. And the appearance of the glory of Yahuwah was like a flaming fire on the top of the mount. Again, you need to understand what that glory is. Many do not understand it because they're not born of the water and the spirit. They still carnal. They stand in the flesh. Well, you understand that wisdom is a spirit. And that's what gives you the light. Do you understand First Peter chapter five verse four? You shall attain a cloud of glory that you, you shall attain your crown of glory that should never fade away. Going back to be Adamic, okay. And remember, the Messiah possessed all of her; she is numbered. And he also showed you an um an example of that in the gospel. Moshe has shown you an example of that in 
Torah and it's mentioned in the book of Corinthians and in other sacred books such as through Enoch uh, he showed an example of that through Noah even the book that's written by Solomon again because in English people don't go back to the Hebrew to understand what those words really mean okay And Moshe was on the mount 40 days, 40 daylights and 40 nights. And Yahuwah taught him the earlier and latter history of all the division of the days of the law of the testimony. Now, to save time, y'all, it's, it's, you really need to read this to see what was told unto Moshe because it's a future prophecy that would pertain to our generation. And what I may do, I may just read this in another video at another designated time. But I need for you to uh, meditate on why Moses was in that cloud for seven days. And I'm not talking about 24 hours. I'm dealing with the phases of the day. All right. Because we know on the seventh day, that's when the father called him out of it. OK. All right. So I'm going to highlight this. This is what you want to focus on. And he, the seventh day out of the midst of the cloud and the appearance of the glory of Yahuwah was like a flaming fire on the top of the mount. And Moses was on the mount 40 days and 40 nights. And y'all, this is the part I want you to highlight. It was there that Yahuwah revealed unto Moshe the history. This is going back to the ancient of days. OK, he revealed to him the latter history of the division of all the days of the law and the testimony. All right. These are the books we should be under to understand the ancient history. These are the books we should be reading because man don't have the answers. OK, this come by faith and believing what the prophets wrote. So Moshe was giving you the ancient history so you can understand why this came to be, how this happened, you know, how they became into existence. Again, he always speaks to what? His prophets, who are his mouth priests. And I'm going to say this into all the assemblies. You should have prophets and prophetess in your congregation. As Paul has revealed unto you, they are to edify the bride, the church. OK, they are to edify you to make sure you stay on that path of righteousness so you won't be led away into private interpretations remember they only speak what the father give unto them they don't put their opinions or their um, beliefs they speak what thus says Yah so I'm telling you pastors do you hear me pastors you should have prophets and prophetess in your congregation if not then something's wrong Remember, there's many members in the body and one of the members in the Bible in the body to make the body complete is your prophets and prophetess. OK, so for homework, I want you to read this whole chapter because we're going to come back to this in another video because it's dealing with a future prophecy that is going to tie into now. All right. Now, let's go to the work of Josephus. Now, Josephus is written in the same manner like the Bible. <laughs> it's like a conversation. It's on one topic, then go to another topic, then it come back to the same topic. And it was done that way because the father knew the heathens would go into our sacred books and they would be removing stuff and adding stuff. However, the father is always one step ahead of them. So it's written that may it's written in that format to throw them off. But those who are his, <laughs> those who have the oil in them those things will be revealed unto us okay so when we go to and the antiquity of the jews of the yahudim okay we go to book one and book one is dealing with from creation to the death of um isaac all right and when you read Josephus' writings he will reveal to you that he had access to the sacred scrolls this is where he got all his information from remember he's of the lineage of the maccabeans and he's of the high priest lineage He's a son of Aaron. He come from that lineage, that tribe. OK, so we're going to look at Antiquities, chapter one. Um, I mean, book one, chapter one, section one on page one in, in his book. 
okay and we're going to start with we're going to read a little higher and you're going to see why okay On the sixth day, he created the four-footed beasts and made them male and female. On the same day, he also formed man. Accordingly, Moses, Moshe, says that in just six days, the world and all that is therein was made. So we know the father finished making all his creations by the six days so it took a total of six days for him to create everything from the heavens to the earth all right and he's and josephus is telling letting you know this is from the account or this is from the testimony that came from moses and where did moses get this from yahuwah himself directly directly okay do y'all see how everything's connected now all right so Moses got this information when he went up to Mount Sinai. Okay. And it's very important to line this up with the day's creation because we get into the mystery now. All right. And the seventh day was a rest and a release from the labor of such operations. Whence it is that we celebrate a rest from our labors on that day and call it the Sabbath, which word denotes rest in the hebrew tongue for those who do not want to take ta take partake in the rest of y'all that makes no common sense or heavenly sense because who don't want to, to rest from their work are you not tired <laughs> like i said the heathens had me laughing they makes no spiritual heavenly sense to me <laughs> however we are our father's children. He set the example. And just as we are made in his image, we imitate him. So just as he rests from creating, so shall we rest from what? Agriculture, farming, sowing, or from other labors that we do. Like the old saying, like father, like son, right? Okay. All right. Now we go on to section two. Moreover, Moshe, after the seventh day was over, do y'all hear this? In addition to this, Josephus is telling you something else. It said, in addition, Moshe, after the seventh day was over, began to talk philosophically. Y'all need to underline that because he ain't talking about the seventh day creation. Okay. He ain't talking about Genesis. Um. Two, he's talking about Exodus chapter 24, dealing with Moshe on the seventh day when he called him out the midst of the cloud. So just as in creation, the father created all his creation and it took six days. Then on the seventh day, which is what? Rest, which is sanctification, perfection. And um, what's that key word I'm looking for? Remember I gave you all those key words? Just as sanctification and Sabbath and rest was on the seventh day, this was also the same with 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 um, Moshe, how he called him out of the cloud on the seventh day. Perfection, sanctification, rest. In order for the Father to talk to him, I'm giving y'all I'm giving y'all mystery here. Now I want you I want you to write down the steps. In order for the Father to talk to him and to reveal these sacred things. Perfection, sanctification, and rest had to take place. This is why he had Moshe to wait in the cloud to symbolize what would happen to you. Remember the steps I shared with y'all dealing with Yashrael in order for them to enter into the covenant? You got to look at this as the steps to the status of Adam or the steps to become Adamic. Okay, do y'all hear me? The steps to become Adamic, all right? I don't want to call this courtship. Because, <laughs> you know, we, we got to have a, an analogy to really understand what the father was doing with Yashrael, which will what? Spread among the world. Because Yashrael was what? The, um, the nation 
that was set above the other nations to be an example unto them. Okay? Okay? All the steps to become Adamic. Right? I call this courtship. And you're going to see why. So, just as a woman, if a man want her to become his wife, he got to set her free. Because when you look, when you study the history of my people, back then, back then it was very strict, y'all. And a, a, a female was not permitted to do the same thing that a young male could do. The young male can run the streets and do it his pleas, but when it comes to the female, the father put what? Restrictions and bounds on her. Okay? All right. I'm saying I can give you an example. So, just like the female to be set free out of her father's home, the same thing with the children of Israel. They had to be set free from the dragon. And if you're not set free from the powers of darkness, you cannot receive what is holy and sanctified unto the father. OK, it's very important. So freedom and liberty got to take place. And this should remind you what's going to take place among the bride, the 144 in the nation of Israel. Because we know a deliverer is coming for us to be saved out of what the fourth beast kingdom. Do y'all see how everything just relates? Then after you are set free, after, you know, just like the children of Israel, after they are set free, they had to be what cleansed. And that's when baptism take place. That's done with the water and the fire. Okay. The water and the fire. All right. That's that's where the cloud come in. I should put the cloud, which is what? The living word. Yahusha Hamashiach. Okay. <laughs> All right. Because, you know, in, in the gospel, he said he shall come and baptize you in water and in fire. All right. Then the next step is that you have to partake in the spiritual drink. And that spiritual drink is dealing with with the living waters, the living waters. Again, you have to come through the iron who is what? Yahushua HaMashiach, for he is the fountain of the living waters. Y'all see how everything's just connected here? Okay. All right. So this is the spiritual drink, which is the living waters. All right. Then after that, because remember, you know, he, he had Moses to crack the rock and then they drank of the spiritual drink. <laughs> I tell you, I just love how I give these physical examples so we can stand the spiritual example because the living waters will also give you what life, which is what knowledge, wisdom, understanding that comes from the heaven above. In other words, you will have your father mind in you. And because you have your father in mind in you, you shall be an internal being. You shall be what? In, let me see, was it mortal? I, I get those words mixed up, but you should be eternal. Going back to what he originally created you to be. Then the next step after that, you have to partake in the bread of heaven. Remember I told y'all years ago, it starts with the mouth. So you have to receive the bread of heaven so it can come and abide in you. So it's just taking me back to the makeup of Adam. Body, soul, and spirit. Soul come from the breath, which is the spirit. Then um, spirit, which come, I'm sorry, yeah, soul, which come from the breath, which is the spirit. Then the spirit that he had planted into Adam, the living word. He is your, he is your light. He's your eye. He's the one that guide you in all things. Again, it was there in the beginning. So you had to partake in the bread of heaven. Okay. And that bread was what? Sustain you and keep you alive. Remember what Entor said that the day would come that man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word that come out of the mouth of Yahuwah. And that word is the bread of heaven. And that's what and that's how we are able to overcome. That's how we are able to live. This is why we are, are revived again. All right. Then after that, the next step, which is the fifth step, is the Sabbath. Then you can enter into his Sabbath. Again, sanctification. Um has to take place. Cleansing has to take place. Freedom has to take place. Then partake in the spiritual drink and, and, and the eating of the bread. This is where we see now why in the gospel it has been foreshadowed that we are to what partake in Passover, which the um, Gentiles today call communion, the drinking of the bread and the wine. 
Do y'all see this? Everything's connected. Okay. So then we can enter into his rest and there we can worship our father in liberty and in truth and in peace and joy, happiness, no pain, no sorrow, no death. Do y'all see this? All right. And once we are able to do that, then we can be what? Join to him. Tov. Hebrew letter. Tov. Join to him. Join to Yahuwah. Remember what the Messiah said. Once you receive me, then they can abide in you. The father, the son, and the mother. Mysteries. Okay. So you receive, again, go back to the Hebrew letters that's listed in Psalms 119. Because even in the Hebrew letters, they all have meaning to help you understand these biblical prophecies and biblical events. Okay. All right. One of the two that I recommend that you look at is the left and iron. This is why those, um, yeah, the left and iron, which represent the Messiah. Also go back and read Paul's writings in Romans chapter one. Hint, hint, well, not hint, hint. I'm speaking to you heathens. Paul called you covenant breakers. And there's a video on that to give you the mystery on why there would be no excuse, whether you're an Israelite or Gentile, whether you're a male or female, whether you're an adult or child, you will have no excuse. Judgment is coming to you. Okay, so we see a relationship with the days of creation, you know, with the days that Moses is in this a mountain and the cloud and, 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 and why he's in the midst of the cloud. For in order to Moses to receive or to commune with the father, that these events had to take place upon him, too. He had to be cleansed by the living word. Be sanctified by the living word and perfected by the living word. OK, and then on the seventh day, he could commune with the father and receive these sacred things. Do y'all see it? Because he is what? Perfected. He is Adamic. And I can't remember was it the first time or the second time after 40 daylights and 40 days. There was a great divine uh, incident that that happened with Moses when he was communing with the father. Did he not come off the mountain where he was so bright? He was covered in light. He was such. He was white. He was the band that they, they had to cover him <laughs> with a veil because the people couldn't do endure the light. See, darkness can't can't endure the light. That is in First Corinthians. Let me find that chapter for y'all. First Corinthians chapter three. Let's go there. Let me see. And this is something I'm going to give you for homework to read. Or is it 2 Corinthians chapter 3? Bear with me, y'all. Sometimes my computer don't move fast enough, like the way I want it. Yep, Second Corinthians chapter three, starting with verse thirteen. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children that could not steadfast to look at the end of that which is abolished okay so when you go down let me see if that precept is there where you can find out in what chapter 
Because he was so bright, y'all, they couldn't do the light. And that's how it is with darkness. They can't endure the light. It's too bright for them. In other words, they can't endure the truth. They can't endure or bear their shame or their wickedness or their evil they have done. Okay? Let me see. Nope, it don't mention what chapter. So in the book of Exodus, let me see, can I find it for you? With the veil. Yep, it is in Exodus chapter 34. Let's see here. And that's probably, yeah, this is dealing with the second time when he went up to Mount Sinai for 40 days, 40 daylights and 40 nights. Okay. And when he came down this time, he was so bright, they had to put a veil on him. And the mystery about being ready and white, which you see in Song of Solomon. Ready means what? Reddish brown. Reddish brown. And you're going to see why I mentioned this now because we, we still read it in Josephus. Okay? Because we know Adam came from red clay. And Josephus would back me up too. And the mystery of light, which is Sach. T-S-A-C-H. T-S-A-C-H. I'm going to put that under here. Song of Solomon. Because the same thing happened with Moses. Because we know Moses was a melanated man. Okay. I think it's in chapter 5 verse. Is it 10 verse 5 or 5 verse 10? Okay. But just check behind me. But it's dealing with ruddy and white. This is what the Messiah looked like. Which means in Hebrew. He was Adam or Adam and Sach. And we had learned the mystery of melon or melanated, okay? And um, it's on the channel. I'm just going to give you a highlight. We learned that when one has melon, you can be a bearer of the light, okay? And this is why the father, okay, I'm going to put this in here. Melon is the bearer of the true light, okay? And when you and we, I'm gonna say this too, because a lot of people don't know about this. Melon is in all things. This is what gives the color to things. I even learned that melon is in the space, and melon is in the water. And it makes sense because when you sign light and water, do you not get a rainbow? You get colors, right? Melon is in all things, and this is what he made Adam with in melon, okay? Because it's it's the bearer of the true light. Of Yah, it is a conductor of light. Okay, a conductor of light, and this is why when one has melon, they have a, a greater protection from the sun. They can endure the sun. In words, they can take the heat. Do y'all see that? Okay, okay. A um uh, conductor, not cane. A conductor of light. Mm -hmm. Because when you when you learn about colors, you will learn that all uh, the color. I'm just use this for example. The color black, like I said, the darker the hue, the better. But the color the black absorbs the light. Okay. But when you get to the lighter shades, the more lighter the color is, y'all, it's gonna push the light away. And and the reason why this is so important because he gives these fillers examples so we can understand what takes place in us is that. We are, are we not his children? Is he not the father of lights? Okay. So because we are his children, we are what? The children of light. We're not the children of darkness. So we too shall be what? A conductor of light. All right. So <laughs> right here, where, where I was going to go to next with this. Uh, we're going to go back to Josephus because we got to finish reading Josephus. Because it's also going to say that Moses and the father have a talk. So when he called him out that cloud on the seventh day, he have a talk with Moses. And it's not only dealing with philosophy. Okay. 
I, let's look up philosophy because I, I, I want to know why they chose that word when they translate it. Philosophy deals with the study of the fundamental knowledge, I mean, the fundamental nature of knowledge, reality, existence, especially when considered as an academic discipline. So in other words, it is the study of how things came to be. It is the study of how we got this knowledge. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is. So the father had, had a sacred talk with Moses about it, how he made these things. So he also go on to say that he also tells him and the concerning of the formation of man. So the, the, the so he tells him how he made Adam. Save thus that Yahuwah took dust from the ground and formed Adam and insert him in and inserted in him a spirit and a soul. This is very important. Okay, we'll talk about that mystery again. We talked about it before, but as another verse that the Father pointed out to me to expound on soul. Okay, but let's keep going. So the Father put in Adam a spirit and a soul. All right. This man was called Adam, which in the Hebrew tongue signify one that is red. So what I show you about red hair in Wikipedia, the definition of Adam is said that he was reddish brown, meaning that he come from clay of the earth. All right. So he was a melanated man, which makes sense because he was what a conductor of light. And when you learn from the sacred books, you will learn that before the fall, our four parents, the male and the female who are called Adam was covered in light. But when they fell, they became covered in flesh. This is why you have that inner struggle within yourself between good and evil. This is why Paul say that there are times I struggle within myself because I want to do good. But my flesh, my body desire evil because we're not covered in that light to be a Dominic. Again, mysteries. All right. So it goes on to say that Adam means that one that is red because he was formed out of the red earth. So he was a melanated man. All right. Compounded together for of that kind is virgin and true earth. Do y'all hear that? So that kind of earth, that type of clay, y'all, is virgin and true earth. Again, the father has a reason why he chose certain things in his creation. So for Adam, he chose to make him of the red earth because it's virgin, it's pure, it's holy unto him, it's sacred. This is why that body particular particular time was the what temple, the house of Yahuwah. And this is why his spirit could dwell in it before the fall. Do y'all see this now? All right, that's another mystery we reveal to you. And it goes on to say that Yahuwah also presented the living creatures when he had made them according to their kind, both male and female. Again, the idea of male and female come from heaven above. All right. Now, to Adam, who gave them those names by which they were still called. How did Adam know how to name those animals, y'all? Goes back to what the father plant in him, the spirit. That's how Adam knew what to call them. All right, let's keep going. But when he saw that Adam had no female companion, okay? So when he saw that with his other creation, he gave them companion. But with Adam, he had no companion. He had no best friend. He had no help me, no mate. All right, no society, for there was no such created. So in other words, he didn't see him having a family structure or a family institution. Again, the family institution come from heaven above. All right. What's done in heaven is done in earth. And that he wondered at the other animals, which was male and female. He lay him asleep and took away one of his ribs. And out of it formed a woman to help me, who's made in the image of wisdom. This is why the woman, this is why a wife is a great possession. A lot of brothers misunderstand the role of the woman. She is compared to the spirit of wisdom. For remember, we're made from their image. Mysteries. This is why in ministry, we should be operating in the Adamic status. Male and female together. There's great power in that. 
but many Mr. Mysteries. But let's keep going. Whereupon Adam knew her when she was brought to him and announced that she was made out of himself. So we come from you, my brother. <laughs> now a woman is called in the Hebrew tongue Isha, but the name of this woman was Eve, which signified the mother of all living. Do y'all see that? She's given the title of mother. Where did that title, where did that idea come from? The heavens. This is why wisdom is your mother. For the Messiah again said what? Wisdom shall be justified by her children. All right. So to sum this powerful lesson up, because I'm going to make a copy of this, y'all, to go in our notes. Because we're going to come back to this because, you know, I told y'all we got to read Jubilees chapter one because there's a future prophecy in it. OK. So we got to come back to that. This is Antiquity, book one, chapter one, page one. OK. And then let me close that out. I, I mean, I could say I, I know we've been talking about a lot of stuff, but to get back on, you know, the topic again, why did the father had Moshe to wait in the cloud? Hmm. So the answer was given unto you. It has to deal with and, and, and why he called him out on the seventh day. That was Jubilees chapter 12, y'all, that, that I read out to you. So let's review the answer together. Let me close this out. I don't like a whole lot of tabs open. So I'm going to close this out. Close this out. And we're going to close this out. So why did he have Moses in the cloud? And why did he call him out on the seventh day? Why not another day? But here's the mystery. He had Moses to wait in the cloud for seven days because Moses was being what? Sanctified. Perfected. So he can what? Enter into the rest. So he can what? Commune. I need to put this in here. So he commune. So he can commune with the father. In other words, have a talk with the father. And this is why he could go without eating and drinking for 40 days and 40 nights. Because he partake in the living bread. And he partake in the drink where he'll never go a thirst. So he'll never a hungry and he never go a thirst. This is why he was able to do this. Because it all came by spirit. And who was that cloud? Yahushua HaMashiach. For in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And the father told me you no know, go there. So we're going to go there. It says that that cloud followed them. During the day. And in the night it became a pillar of fire. And that that cloud was Yahushua HaMashiach y'all. Do y'all see that? And then it said that on the mountain. Was the glory of Yah. That was wisdom. That's what she looked like. She's pure light y'all. And that's what she clothed her children in. In light. Okay. Alright. So them two. Living word and wisdom. Was getting Moses right. To get him prepared. So he could have what? A talk with the father. So he could commune with him. And so he could be able to receive. What is holy and sacred divine. This is why we go to these books. To understand how we came to be. How we came into existence. See right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. It says that moreover brother. I would not that you should be ignorant. So you should not be. Um, lacking knowledge. Or not know. How that all our five forefathers was under the cloud. Do y'all see that? And all passed through the sea. And all was baptized unto Moshe in the cloud. Do y'all see that? That baptism being what? Cleanse. Being what? Submerged in the water and in the fire. Hallelujah. And they all eat the same spiritual drink. Which is that spiritual drink? Which is the living waters. The Ruach HaKadosh. <laughs> and only can you receive the Ruach HaKadosh once you receive the sun first again. <laughs> Verse 4. And they all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock. Who was that rock? That foundation. The living word. Yahushua HaMashiach. That followed them. And that rock was the Messiah. Do y'all see that? 
So now we understand why the father did what he did with Moshe and why, and why Moshe had a rake in that cloud for seven days. And then on the seventh day, do y'all hear me? Then on the seventh day, that's when he called him out and had a word with Moshe to take back to the people what is in the agreement, what is in the marriage, okay, which is the covenant. That's the Ten Commandments. That's the two great commandments. That's the statutes, the judgment, all that we see in that Bible from the beginning to the end, from the left to the tall. In the Greek tongue, they say from the Alpha to the Omega, all of that, he put it in writing to show the people what they're going to what partake in and what they are married to and what they're joined to. This is why the father said through his prophets, he want his wife back. This is why the two sticks have become one stick, no longer two kingdoms, but one kingdom, one manure, not two manures. Do y'all see this? Because the father want his wife back, O nation of Israel. Do y'all see this? So the second time when he went on the mountain in as far as Exodus, I think it's chapter 34. This is why we understand why Moses was covered in light. Do y'all see this? Giving you an example. What does it look like or what does it mean to be Adamic? And what is Adamic? To be the son slash daughter of God. To be his child. What he made you to be in the beginning. All right, I said enough in this. We're going to come back with a part two. Um, but look for the video that's dealing with the biblical events of the flood. That's the next thing we need to talk about. But this will be a part two. Because you see, we got to go back to Jubilees and read that chapter because it's a future prophecy that deals with the end days. I love you all. Continue to preach that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, for it's truly at hand, for we can see the signs taking place upon the heaven and the earth. Make sure the people receive salvation as written in Romans chapter 10 and follow the example that the Messiah and his disciples slash apostles set before us. For the Lamb set the example of the water baptism and the Holy Spirit baptism, the water and the fire. <laughs> okay. And if you have no one to baptize you, guess what? The Father got you covered. For the water is the second witness in the earth and the heavens and the earth are his witness. All you have to do is what? Put your faith and works. Wherever there's water, you can be baptized. In your bathroom, your swimming pool, in the river, the lake, the ocean, wherever there's water, you can be baptized. As far as the Holy Spirit baptism, he made that simple too, because he said, all you have to do is ask in my son's name for all powers and authorities are given to his son in heaven and earth. Okay. And he would give it unto you according to your heart, faith and words. Remember, he is your father. He's doing what's best for you. He is trying to, he, his goal is to save your soul. He do not want you to go to hell, which is Sheol. For is that's where the place of captivity is. That is the place where the angels are bound in. So he didn't make it for you, Adam. He made it for the angels. However, if you want to be wicked and evil, he will send you there too. So his goal is to save your soul. So if you um, don't receive that spiritual gift as far as what I'm talking about with the gifts that comes with that spirit, because the father do not want the spirit pride to get upon you. And then you get above yourself and then you be out of control. Mm -mm. Father knows what's best. He give according, he give by measure. So it's according to your heart, your faith and your words. Love you all and shalom.